Thank you for joining me. Today we shall develop a VAR model from which we are going to extract the variance decomposition for forecasting. But before I proceed, I want to appreciate all my viewers and subscribers from all over the world. I thank you for your questions and for your encouraging comments, and I'll do my best to prepare all the video requests that you have sent to me. So what is VAR? It simply means vector autoregressive model. The term autoregressive is because of the presence of the lagged values of the dependent variable on the right-hand side of the model. And the term vector is because that there are two or more variables included in that model. The VAR approach also bypasses the need for structural modeling by treating every variable as endogenous. So in the VAR system, there are no exogenous variables. Also, VAR is commonly used for forecasting systems of interrelated time series and for analyzing the dynamic impact of random disturbances in the variables. So one of the usefulness of VAR is for forecasting. So let's take a look at an example of a three-variable VAR model which are specified on the screen. We can see here log of yt, log of xt, and log of zt. And in the model specification, each dependent variable is a function of its own lag. Let's look at yt here. We can see log of yt minus 1. Same thing for xt. We can see here log of xt minus 1. And for zt, we can see here the log of zt minus 1. So like I said earlier on, in the VAR system, there are no exogenous variables. All variables are simply endogenous. And these are the parameters to be estimated, A, B, D, I, J. So those are the parameters or coefficients that we are going to obtain after estimating the VAR system. So now let's quickly move on to variance decomposition. What is it all about? The VD of a forecast gives the percentage of unexpected variation in each variable that is produced by shocks from other variables. It also indicates relative impacts of a variable on another one. So by measuring relative impacts or by measuring the percentage of unexpected variation in each variable on the forecast error, that is what variance decomposition gives you information about. It also enables assessment of economic significance of this impact being a percentage of the forecast error for a variable. And by the time you sum up the various decompositions, it will amount to 1. And if you multiply by 100, it amounts to 100. The system also decomposes the forecast error variance, as we shall see in a moment. And lastly, the component measures a fraction of a variable explained by these innovations. Innovations are shocks in the language of R. For this tutorial, I'm just going to uh, list six very simple procedures that can engage you from estimating a VAR model to obtaining the variance decomposition for each of the variable. Just six simple steps. Step one, state your research objective before you begin. I mean, what do you want to do? In my example, we are going to use a VAR model to investigate the relation between external debt stock and economic growth. And after that, we are going to see whether there's going to be any significant impact from the shocks. So this is where the variance decomposition and forecasting comes in. Also, let us know what variables we'll be using. In my own case, I'll be using the real GDP, desktop, external desktop, and government spending. So three variables, and I've already done their log linearization. They are all in their natural logs. Secondly, you proceed to perform stationarity tests. This is very mandatory. The series must be stationary. Then obtain optimal lags, after which you now run your unrestricted VAR and you interpret the results. Step 5, perform some diagnostics, serial correlation, stability, as the case may be, heteroscedasticity. Then lastly, perform the variance decomposition and go ahead to interpret your results and forecast into the future. So having said all this, let us now move over to e-views and analyze this VAR model in investigating the relationship between external debt stock and economic growth. So here we can see on the screen, my sample is on 34 observations from 1981 to 2014, and I'll be using real GDP, the external debt stock variable, and government spending. They are all in their natural logs. So second step will be to carry out a stationarity test. 
So starting with the real GDP, I move on to view, unit true test. I'm starting with the level form. I'm using the Schwarz criterion. Maximum lags defaulted to 8, but I'm changing that back to 2 because I only have 34 uh, observations. I click OK. So from the T-statistics, I can see that um, uh, real GDP is clearly a non-stationary series. So to correct that, I go back to unit root, click on first difference, still leaving maximum lags at 2, I click OK. So at 5.29 absolute terms, is now a stationary series. I do the same thing for SNI desktop, view, unit root test, level, maximum lags to be used, 2, OK. From the outcome of the ADF test, 2.26 is clearly a non-stationary series. To correct that, view, unit root test, first difference, OK. Now at 4.48 is a stationary series. Lastly, I do the same for government spending, view, unit root test, level. I change that back to 2. I click OK. We can see here clearly is a non-stationary series. To correct that, view, unit root test, first difference, OK. So now all the three variables are now stationary. Step three, obtain optimal lags. To do that, you have to run the unrestricted var for each of these endogenous variables. So beginning with real GDP, I go to quick, estimate var. Make sure that the standard var button or the unrestricted var button is clicked. In the endogenous variable section, I type in real GDP. I click OK. Here is the output. To obtain the lag structure, go to view, lag structure, click on lag length criteria. I'm modifying lags to include to 2. I click OK. Optimal lag chosen by Schwarz criterion is 1. I'm doing the same thing now for the second variable. So we can see here log of EDS, which is x desktop, the optimal lag structure is also 1 by Schwarz criterion. Next, I do the same for government spending. You can see here log of government spending, lag selection, optimal lag chosen by Schwarz criterion is also 1. So all the three variables are having optimal lag structure of 1. Now we move on to step 4 and estimate an unrestricted var. To do that, we go to quick, estimate var. Here now, I list all the variables. Under lag intervals for endogenous, from the outcome of my lag test, I'm changing that back to 1, so I have 1, 1. Everything looks OK, I click OK. So here you can see the output for my var estimation. Lag 1 for each of the variables in the model. Step five, test for diagnostics. I go to view, residual test. I'm starting with autocorrelation LM test, including one lag each, but that's what I'm using, okay? So I can see there's no serial correlation. That's the good news. I test again for normality. Using Koleski of covariance, I click okay. So here we can see var residual normality test, and you can see here the components. I have three components. Remember, I have three variables. For the first variable, the residuals are normally distributed, but the same thing cannot be said for the second and third variables. So here is the outcome of my normality test. Heteroskedasticity. So from the result, there is no heteroskedasticity. Step 5 is done. The next thing to do is the final step, which is to obtain the variance decomposition. And to do that, I simply go to View, click on Variance Decomposition, and in the Variance Decomposition dialog box, you can see the period here has defaulted to 10. A period in my own case is a year because I have an annual data. So if you have a quarterly data, whatever you see here implies the number of the quarters you are forecasting into. So I'm going to modify 10 periods now to 5. I want to have a 5-year forecast, so I'm changing 10 to 5. I want my result to be displayed in the table form, so this one remains the way it is. Koleski ordering is fine by me, and I click OK. So on the screen is the uh, outcome of the variance decomposition for each of the variables in the model. 
let's take a look at the heading here you can see the one for real gdp external debt stock and here's the one for government expenditure so this is where i will stop don't go away stay with me in my next tutorial where i give an in-depth explanation or interpretation of the results thank you for watching subscribe for more videos from crunch econometrics please don't go away i'll be right back